Evening folks, Patrick here, and today... Crap. Take two. Good day folks, Patrick here from Patty Joe Cooking, and today we're making a cheese and... <laughs> it's got to be the worst Australian accent ever. Take three. Good day folks, Patrick here from Patty Joe Cooking, and today we're making a cheese and steak sandwich. We're not... Take four. Good day folks, Patrick here from Patty Joe Cooking and today we're not cooking with wallaby or kangaroo or Vegemite or even Tasmanian devils. Love those little buggers. They look just like Baby Yoda and I've been to Tasmania. No, today we're making a cheese and steak sandwich and we're using some tasty cheese and beef. All right, guys, let's get to cooking. Hey, everybody, Mike Wolford here from the Dude's Kitchen and Grill. And today, like my cousin Patrick in Australia said, by the way, he did a great job. We're making a cheese steak sandwich. This isn't Philadelphia style. This is just some dude in his backyard making a cheese steak sandwich that is freaking awesome. All right, guys, this is super simple to make. Um, we have, we're gonna start with the butter and I've already got you know, our veggies are already pre-sliced because I don't want to sit out here and slice these. It's only like 32 degrees out. Patrick's world will be like zero Celsius, burr. So let's get to starting this. It's so stinking cold out here. Things are just not wanting to warm up. So I'm going to take this piece of butter here, kind of quarter it. Drop it down in there because we're going to cook in butter. I love cooking in butter. If I need to add more butter, I will. We're going to give this a moment and let it come up to temperature. And then we are going to start putting in our veggies. Let's give this a try. I'm just going to take a handful, throw them in like so. Now the onions I am going to kind of break up a little bit. I do want the strings of onions like that for this. I don't want them finely diced, but you could do that if you wanted to, no biggie. All right, we're gonna put the mushrooms in towards the end of this, but we are also going to add, because we're, we're not using Uncle Steve's shake on this, we're adding, or we're using, excuse me, uh, SP and G, but I'm just gonna use the G for the SP and G is actually gonna be in here cooking with this. Be careful though, because if it gets too hot, you can burn the G. We're gonna let this uh, come up to speed. We'll tell you how long it takes and then throw in our mushrooms and we'll be right back. We've hit about 15 minutes. It's time to check this out. Coming along nicely. The onions are starting to get limp. If you have any idea what, if you guys want to know what that is, just look at Chris from Eastwind Farms. He does a whole series on limp veggies. <laughs> Chris. Here's my Chris moment. It's been a while. Okay, so we're gonna put the mushrooms in. I don't think this is gonna take very long for the mushrooms. And then we have another pan over here. You can kind of barely see it here. And we're just gonna move those over there, all the all this, because I wanna use the garlic and whatever else is left over from the flavor of this to cook our steaks. Let's give this a few minutes and then we'll check back in on it. We were right on with the five minutes. Look at that. So I'm just gonna move these over to this pan. Let them finish up in there. So it's time to put our steak down. Now, I don't have to get everything out of here. I mean, the mushrooms, obviously we're gonna have mushrooms and garlic left over. That's just gonna add to the flavor of our steak. I do have a piece of tri-tip over here. We're gonna use. So that is just about perfect to me. Let's start on the tri-tip now. With the tri-tip, we wanna just cut it as thin as possible. I mean, that's about as thin, that's about as thin as I'm going to get it. Now, I did cut off the fat. It is still kind of frozen, not really, really frozen. It's just easier to cut when it's like that. A little extra piece there. Ooh. 
Hey, that's working out pretty good. I'm gonna make it a little easier though to cut. Man, it is so cold out here. But it's so warm next to the round black stone. Whew. Actually, it's a Cuisinart 360 griddle, but Kent from Daddy Dutch Cooking calls it the round black stone. Well, that's close enough for government work for me right there. And I think it's just time to start putting it into the pan. Now this part's not gonna take very long. I don't want these things like super fried or anything like that. I just want them cooked up really nice. I'm gonna wash my hands guys while you watch this and I'll be right back. It's time for one of my favorite parts of the cook. And that's the bun. I'm gonna do two buns. And I'm really just going to cut them like this. Almost all the way through. Look at that. Do another one. Almost all the way through. Not quite. I mean, if you go all the way through, big deal. But that's close enough. I'm going to take some mayo because I want to toast the insides of this. And that wind's biting. So I'm just using some mayo for this, for the inside. Won't take long. We're gonna put it on the black of the round black stone. Put them down like so for a few minutes. And those should be done in a few minutes. Everything else is coming along quite nicely. You really need to watch your buns though. <laughs> no pun intended. And the reason being is they're not gonna take long to heat up on the bottom. And the last thing you want is a burned bun. That took about five minutes. That's looking pretty toasty underneath. Take these off. Toasty. Take them off. I think it's time to just start adding our veggies to the meat. And from there, <clears throat> I'm going to take some of this tasty provolone cheese. Put over the top. Just kind of let these things start working their magic. The melts through there. And then I think it'll be time to eat. That's looking just about perfect. I think it's time to take these off and sandwich it up. Now I did clean these off during the break, but I'm not sure I'm gonna use them. I think I'm gonna go with this instead. Oh yeah. Dang, look at that. Holy cow. Look at that. That, oh man, I can hardly wait, hardly wait. Another monster for you. Let's get to eating, guys. Now, before we try this, you don't know ep episodes complete without a beer. Somebody gave me this Keystone Key Lightful Raspberry Lime Beer. 
I don't know my cousin Patrick down at Patty Joe Cooking likes to try some odd stuff. My God, I wouldn't feed that to my dog. Poor Zoe. All right, guys, you know what time it is? Time for a white Russian. White Russians go well with everything. Did you know that the Dude's Kitchen and Grill also has a barbecue talk show? That's right, every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Mountain, 9 p.m. Eastern, we have the Wednesday night barbecue and talk show where we have the white Russian cam, we have guests, we have open bar seating, we just have a blast. We talk about new channels, how to grow your channel, you name it, we talk about it. Cheers, guys. And cheers to my cousin Patrick. It's his birthday coming up. All right, it is time. Mmm. Absolutely amazing. Mmm. Wow. Goes well with a white Russian too. You know what? You know how we made it. The recipe's down below. This is not a Philly cheesesteak. Like I said, this is just some dude in the backyard He's freezing his butt off making a cheesesteak. But I'll tell you what, cheesesteak sandwich, sorry. This is good. All right, guys, thanks everybody for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment, share, ring that bell for notifications. We'll talk to you later. And remember, the dude abides this time with a cheesesteak sandwich. See you later, guys.